I want to live here, and I was interested in the problem of how do you make Atlanta into the kind of place you might want to live for the rest of your life. Inspired by the prospect of bringing the Atlanta community together, Brian Gravel, a Georgia Tech graduate student, wrote his thesis on reconnecting Atlanta's neighborhoods throughout a new transit system, the Beltline. One of the founding principles of the Atlanta Beltline was to spur development and reconnect communities within Atlanta. Now, the 22-mile paved pathway connects 45 historic neighborhoods throughout the city and is frequently used by runners, bikers, and families. However, some argue that the Beltline pushes out generational inhabitants to instead favor middle-class white families. Has the Atlanta Beltline Incorporated gentrified these Atlanta neighborhoods, or has it achieved its initial founding goal to spark development and connect communities? I'm Emma Hamilton. I'm Chita K. Duramanya. I'm Arjun Patel. And I'm Sammy Wolfson. Find out more about the Beltline tonight on this special edition of 5 Minutes. Ryan Gravel's 1999 thesis inspired Atlanta Beltline Incorporated, and after written, quickly gained support. Three years later, the project was underway as Gravel and former City Council President Kathy Woolard met with neighborhoods across Atlanta. The plan was to create a new transit system following the old rail corridors that would connect city neighborhoods, improving the community and developing the city along the way. By 2006, Atlanta Beltline Incorporated formed, and a work plan had began to take shape. With the support of local funding and city council approval, the Beltline had a $427 million budget and a five-year plan. Since then, plans have grown and trails have opened one by one with the help of community volunteers. In addition, projects to renovate and create low-cost housing have recently started up along with plans for a streetcar system. To see how all these plans have affected Beltline community members, we took to the streets to talk to pedestrians and homeowners along the trail. We started our search at the Piedmont Park entrance off 10th Street. Along the trail, there are 88 markers like this that are placed every quarter mile to complete the whole 22-mile walkway. Every few stops or so, you can find people taking pictures, families, or traveling street artists like King David. This has been fantastic. Like, you know, it's hard to really put your art somewhere where you get a lot of attention and people can see it. And it's just thousands of people coming every day. I like how sometimes they get the little art displayed, a little graffiti on the yeah, walls yeah. and everything. I think it's pro-community. As King David said, art is everywhere throughout the Beltline and it brings the attention of pedestrians, but also real estate and commercial development. These new housing projects and commercial development have brought attention to certain areas of Atlanta. Our team headed over to historic neighborhoods of the Old Fourth Ward and Reynoldstown to see if the development caused by the Atlanta Beltline has amplified the already present issue of gentrification especially within these historic neighborhoods. We met with native Atlanta resident Daryl, who has lived and witnessed Atlanta grow and develop over the past 49 years. We asked him if he has noticed the Beltline promote gentrification within Atlanta. Yes. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, it's actually changed today, but through gentrification, they've moved out a lot of the original residents. I mean, my father lived over here in the 40s and 50s with totally different neighborhood. Uh, remember a lot of this area were factories. And, uh, so it's changed. It definitely changed. For the worse or for the better? Reason? Well, for the original residents, it was the worst. But for the people moving in, it's, it's a great investment because this area will never go back to what it was before. Yeah. Right. Never. <laughs> you know, this guy's vision of taking old train tracks and making it into you know, pathways and walkways, that's a great thing. It's just that I wish they could have retained some of the original residents uh, because the whole city is changing because of the Beltline. It's, it is connecting, but it's, it's moving a lot of residents out because once the area starts to go up, you know, the services increase, it increased our taxes, and the people who were paying really nothing are now paying a whole lot more so they can't afford, so they sell, they move out, and the area's changed. Atlanta has long been a city central to the South, constantly redesigned and reimagined to keep up with the biggest cities. Numerous projects have steadily expanded city boundaries with the tendency to take over long-standing neighborhoods and communities. The Beltline has promised to stray from this trend, promoting a plan focused on working alongside current residents to bring 40-plus neighborhoods together along the path. While the project has succeeded in physically connecting areas of Atlanta, it has lost the voice of previous long-standing residents. The development has attracted a surge of middle-class families to the area, raising its cost of living and forcing the original homeowners to move elsewhere. 